Drug treatment for Alzheimer's disease is lacking, and scientists are saying that the current drugs that are being used for Alzheimer's disease aren't very effective, and so they've come up with an experimental drug that they think holds more promise. So what do you think of this? Is this good news or right. not? This is nice. It studies in mice, okay, so it, there's, it's years away, but they're right. The drugs that we use in, in uh, medicine today have a fleeting effect on improving memory for a short time, maybe a few months doesn't do anything to slow down the disease and basically it's a disease we have little treatment for in the mainstream. You know what I think? It seems like we ought to get more at the cause than keep trying to find things to, to suppress, the symptoms. suppress the symptoms. It's yeah. like why is there such an epidemic of it? I mean when right. they, they, they project how much it's going to grow oh, in the, the future the costs are staggering. it's huge. It's trillions of dollars too. And look at the, at the disability. I mean we've got five million people with Alzheimer's disease today which is a huge number. You know what I think is causing it is a lot of the environmental pollution. It certainly adds to it and lifestyle would be another thing. I mean there's Well and when you say lifestyle a lot of our lifestyle is influenced by pollution you know Absolutely. like the cosmetics that we use and the cleaning agents oh, that sure, we use sure. and all the things that big industry is polluting. Chemtrails and <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. All kinds the heavy of metals. Things. Sure yeah. that's true. And yet, lifestyle is important too. What you eat, how much exercise you do, what your stress levels are like. Do you get enough sleep? Is your weight what it should be? Do you have a purpose in your life? These are the big things that would help to turn around it a lot, but your point's well taken. And when you talk about things that we eat, there are dietary um, um, things that Approaches. have been shown to improve the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease and maybe even reverse the disease. They may. This is cutting edge research in nutrition, you're right. And what happens, according to the people who believe this, and I'm one of them, I think this is right, is that we have like an electrical brownout with our, like we do in the, in the summertime when everybody's got the air conditioner on. There's just not enough energy to make things work. Brain cells are the same way. When they don't get enough nutrition, they just don't function right. And you have to shift the way the brain uses, it, uh, where it gets its energy from. And what we can do is we can shift it from using sugar to using ketone bodies. And ketone bodies are something that come from burning fat. So if we feed ourselves healthy fats, like coconut oil, about six tablespoons a day, that begins to provide ketone bodies that can provide energy to prevent that brownout from doing what it does. But aren't some of the other things with Alzheimer's, ha doesn't it have to do with amyloid plaques? It can, and, that, and that's, it's related to it, there's no doubt. But there are other nu nutrients that we can use besides a set of, besides these fats that can do a lot to stop that. So we can do things like add a little curcumin or niacinamide. Uh, What's niacinamide? Some, it's a form of, of vitamin B3, mm -hmm. of, of niacin, uh, that helps to produce energy in the brain. Curcumin reduces some of the inflammation and we can use things like choline to help make acetylcholine, which is our major uh, uh, neurotransmitter in, in Alzheimer's it is is depressed substantially. And doesn't B12 help also? B12 and a lot of people does and we need to know how to measure B12 and if you go and put B12 in the search box in drsabuta.com what you'll what you'll get is an article that talks about how do you really measure B12 because a lot of people with normal levels of B12 are still deficient so these are things that are important. See a lot of people think well it's genetic I mean, well, there is some genetics involved with it. We look at the APOE-4 gene, which is one that puts you at risk for it. And there are many genes that do, but I look at the environment as a trigger to those genes. Well, we also know in the topic of epigenetics that we're able to, to, to change our genes. There you go. And that's what happens and what makes the genes turn on or turn off. So it's important. So when we're looking at what we're doing in our treatment, we've got the acetylcholinesterase inhibitors like Aricept and Exelon and Razadine, and we've got the other drugs uh, like Naminda that, that help uh, to block some of the NMDA receptor sites that are involved with, uh, with mentation. And it's a start, but for the most part, most every patient that goes to a neurology gets put on both of those drugs, but I can tell you the patients that I've watched, they just kind of go downhill. Well, also, there are a lot of side effects that can go with these drugs for the small amount of benefit. Indeed. You're looking at things like nausea and vomiting and diarrhea and ulcers. Seizures. And headaches, and right. You can pass out from from cardiac problems and you can't sleep right or be fatigued or not eat right. That's no way to solve a problem. And it's not like everybody has big problems from it. But 
in general, the drugs that we use to treat Alzheimer's don't do a very good job. The nutrition makes a lot more sense to me, and I think that's something we should, we should definitely be using. And lifestyle is our biggest medicine, one that we, we look at and we really don't take seriously. So we're looking at treatment for Alzheimer's disease. These are the things I would be thinking of, not so much the drugs that don't do that much. You know, Alzheimer's is a sad kind of disease to have. And it's upsetting to the people that have gotten a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease uh -huh. because they know that they're going to continue to lose their memory and then they won't be able to function and they're eventually going to die from it. But I think we also need to pay attention to the caretakers because it's very difficult to take care of somebody like this. And I think caretakers need a break once in a while. Mm. They need some help. And I think also many times when someone has Alzheimer's disease, the, the family and friends don't like to go visit them because they have an attitude of like, well, they forgot I was there anyway, they don't yeah, know me, right. they don't remember. But they're kind of trapped, and, the, and I think a lot of them know while you're there. So at least live for the moment. Let them live for the moment. Let them feel good while you're there. Maybe they'll forget five minutes later, but it's okay to bring them some joy for a few minutes. And, you know? when, they're, and when they're in that state, or or even sooner, as soon as you know that it's coming on, get out, get them some exercise and give them mental exercises to do because if we do these things and pay attention to lifestyle approaches and we use exercise and we use uh, diet, all those things that are involved with it, the chances are we're going to make more progress and if we rely on medicines that just don't work that well.